Rwanda, the land of a thousand hills, is located in East Africa with a size of 26,338 square kilometers and a population of about 12.7 million people. The country's economy has been performing very well with an average GDP growth of 8.6% by 2018. Financial inclusion is a key channel for sustainable and inclusive development. So if you really want to, to, to develop your population, the best thing is for them to have access to financial services. Jeanne, a mother of four in her forties, runs a poultry farm with over 700 chickens, rears cows and grows cash crops. Her children go to good schools, eat well and live a decent life. All this began eight years ago when she struggled with small investments from micro-loans acquired from a village savings group before she dared to apply for a bigger loan of 1 million francs from Asako. This was after several attempts to secure her husband's blessings. I told my husband I wanted to do poultry farming. He first declined saying he might fail. As a mother who woke up at 4 every morning to go to the farm and plow while carrying a baby under the sun, you can do all that and prepare food for the children to eat on time. I wanted more for my family, so I had to convince my husband that joining a SACO was the best thing to do for us as a family. Today, after joining a SACO, the difference is noticeable. I have a caring maid that takes care of my children when I'm away. We get milk and the children drink. Yeah, you can see that the problems at home have reduced. I don't have to wait for my husband to come from work to provide. John's story mirrors Rwanda's unique journey of financial inclusion. Community savings and credit cooperatives have been a financial inclusion success story. These cooperatives, known as Umurenge Sakos, have served millions of Rwandans, particularly in the countryside. More than 90% of Rwandans now live within a five-kilometer radius of Asako. The Finiscop survey of 2008 revealed that uh, only 21% of uh, Rwandan bankable population uh, was accessing formal financial services. The government of Rwanda took uh, action. In that regard, in 2009, the government launched the National Savings Mobilization Strategy with the goal of having at least one circle at the sector level. Taojen, a young man in the outskirts of Kigali in Gasabo district, is another beneficiary of these circles. Life hit him hard with his single mother as a school dropout. Through borrowing a motorcycle to carry passengers, he was able to save up to 500 Rwanda francs in a village savings group. He later deposited this money in a sako to buy his own motorcycle, becoming eligible for a loan even when he did not have collateral. He has since received many more loans and has managed to provide for the family. I would borrow a motorcycle to get money to buy food. Lucky enough, I managed to save money. And after seeing the progress made by people who had acquired loans from a circle, I also applied for a loan to buy a motorcycle. They gave me one million Rwandan francs. I paid it off in one year and I went for another one million Rwandan francs to buy another motorcycle. I was later able to buy a plot and I built a house. Circles are my savior. They are the foundation of my success. These circles have done wonders. Beneficiaries are diverse, but the story of Rwanda's effort to close the gap in financial exclusion is broad. There is no shortage of unique cases. Peter became blind at eight after suffering from measles. He was left with limited options for his future. 
a women's cooperative accepted me as a member. That is how I was ushered into the financial ecosystem. I began with receiving 200,000 Rwandan francs. Now I get up to 6 million Rwandan francs. I have built a company. I run properties and I manage everything internally. I know how to manage my expenses and revenues, like anyone else. Challenges I face are not different from what everyone else would face. His business has grown to 25 properties and a cyclist cooperative that hires young people to transport goods. The evolution of financial inclusion in Rwanda in recent years has been characterized by disruptive emerging technologies. In 2009, the financial sector saw entry of mobile money technology, flipping over the world of digital payments. This came at a time when government services had been digitized, prompting runners to use digital payments to access services through an e-government portal called Irembo, which was introduced in 2011. It was after 2009 when over 95% of adult runners were issued with electronic national IDs as an enabler of access to digital financial services. One had to go to the village office first, then to the cell office, then to the sector office. Then they would send him to the bank to pay first. Then he would return with a bank slip. And that is when the executive secretary would provide the service. But today, with just an ID, you pay via mobile money on Irembo, and in less than 10 minutes, you would get the service you requested for. My name is Kayonga Ketia. I'm a student, at the same time owning a canteen. I was working for someone whereby my salary wasn't enough for me because I was paying for my school fees. So I started saving 50,000 per month on my mobile money account for six months to increase my credit rating. So I bought 300,000 on my mobile money account because I couldn't get a loan from the bank because I didn't have a Coratello. Whenever I want to increase my stock, I borrow from my mobile money account without going to the bank, which is so quick and easy. I started with initial capital of 600,000 so I've been working for two years by now my business is worth two million. So where is Rwanda heading to? The national transformation strategy of the government in fact the target we are, we've given ourselves is to reach 100% inclusion by 2024. 